everyone and welcome back to a new video. Sean's name and credit is the game today. Now have you ever checked your Credit Karma or your Credit Journey app to see what your credit score is and a bank or lender has told you it's something entirely different? Well spoiler alert, it happens all the time. When I'm working with clients and they tell me based on some app that their credit score is XYZ, I know that that is an okay gauge to figure out what their score actually is, but that it can pretty much fluctuate by 25 to 50 points. And today, I wanna break down why specifically that's the case. So, without further ado, let's just jump right in. <laughs> First of all, I just want to say real quick that I am not going to be regurgitating information that you can find elsewhere online. All right, I am a licensed mortgage lender and I see hundreds and hundreds of credit reports every single month. So this is going to be information that I have seen first hand. And I know it's frustrating. I want to sympathize with you really quick. I know that when you see a credit score on your app and you think this is what your credit score is and a lender tells you otherwise, I know it sucks. Believe me, I've been on the short end of the stick and I've had to be the bearer of bad news telling someone what their actual credit score is. But I've also been kind of the good news guy by telling someone that it's actually higher than what their apps are saying. It goes both ways, but first thing in this video that I want to explain is why your credit score varies from bureau to bureau. So Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. And then once I kind of break down why it can vary between the different bureaus, you'll get a better understanding as to why it's going to vary based on the app on your phone and what a lender actually sees. Oh, and I want to say that your scores between bureaus are almost never going to be the exact same score. I've probably seen over 5,000 credit reports at this point, and one person out of all of those credit reports has had the exact same score on every single bureau. It's incredibly rare. And here's the three reasons why. So one, they are three entirely separate companies slash entities, and no, they are not run by the government. Now yes, they do have laws and regulations that are set by the government that they all have to follow and abide by, but they do not communicate with each other at all. It's as if they're McDonald's, uh, Wendy's, and Burger King, okay? They all serve you fast food, and they all have to abide by FDA guidelines, but all three of their burgers are gonna be different from the next. Reason being brings me to my number two point is the fact that they all have different scoring modules or algorithms for scoring individuals. So the computations and the weights that each credit bureau puts on certain aspects on a credit report are gonna vary um, depending on the company. So for example, if you had a late payment and it is your first late payment, okay? Experian might be like, ooh yeah, late payment's really bad. Your score is gonna go down 40 points. But TransUnion, and Equifax might say, you know what, it's your first late payment ever. And because of that, it's only gonna drop 20 to 25 points because their algorithms and their computations are gonna be a little less lenient. Actually, wait, they'd be more lenient, right? Because they'd be less strict. English, never my strong suit, always math. But that's just one example, and remember that your credit report is comprised of so many different data points, and every single company is gonna vary tremendously on how they weight each one of those data points. Which brings me to my third point, is the fact that each credit bureau is getting different bits of data. Now, some trade lines, aka you know, credit cards and car loans and whatever else you got on there, some of them are only going to be reporting to some of the bureaus because it's very expensive to report to all three bureaus when you have millions of trade lines out there and millions of people that you're lending to. So some companies are only going to report certain things to certain credit bureaus to save them money. So to keep costs down, and you see this a lot with collections, and I'll explain why in just a second, but to keep the cost down, some of these companies are gonna say, you know what, instead of paying to report every 30 days to all three bureaus, we're just gonna report to two of them, or we're just gonna report to one of them. And the reason in collections are so popular to only be shown on one bureau, sometimes two, is the fact that that collection agency doesn't want to spend more money than they need to on you because if you have something in collections, you're probably not going to pay them. And if you do, it's going to be a lot of work and a lot of money for them to get you to pay them. So they need to be saving money and cutting costs. And the way they're able to do that is by only reporting it to one or two of the bureaus because they know if they report it to one of the bureaus, they got you. You have that debt on your record. Even though it's only reporting on one bureau, you have to address it to improve your score or to get that removed from your name. So they're not going to waste money reporting it to all three bureaus. Now, it's not always the case, but this is what happens more likely than not. So if you have something where your experience score is far lower than your other two, it's most likely because Experian has an old collection that the other two bureaus 
don't have data on. Okay, so that's the quick and dirty as to why your scores are gonna vary depending on the bureau, and unless you have something um, kind of big and detrimental like a collection, um, most of the time your, your scores between each bureau is only gonna be varying by about 15 points. Okay, but there's another twist to this. So some lenders might only use one or two of the bureaus. They might not be using your FICO credit score. Now, if you're a longtime viewer on this channel, hint, hint, you should definitely hit that subscribe button right now and hit the bell. But if you're a longtime viewer on this channel, you know that your FICO credit score is the median score of the three between TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. So some lenders are going to require your FICO credit score and some lenders are just gonna require your credit score, which could be just one of the bureaus. And let me explain the FICO credit score real quick. So if your Equifax is a 700, uh, your Experian is a 730, and your TransUnion is a 720, that 720 is a score that's in between the other two. So your FICO credit score is gonna be that 720. And I'll tell you that every single mortgage lender is using your FICO credit score. It is required by law to use your FICO credit score. However, when it comes to car loans, or maybe even some credit cards, they might only be using one of the bureaus. And why is that? Well, as I mentioned earlier, not only is it expensive to report to all three bureaus every 30 days, but it's also expensive to get a credit report from all three bureaus. So if I were to pull a single bureau credit report, so if I only wanted to see Experian, it'd probably cost me $15. But the fact that I have to get all three on a single report, that tri-merge report is gonna cost me about $35. So most of the time, lenders will go, man, if we're gonna be pulling 25,000 credit reports in a month to see you know, people when they come in and they wanna buy their, their cars, crap, we can't really afford to spend $35 that much if someone's not even gonna buy a car. So let's go ahead and just check one of them and pay that $15 every time someone wants to buy a car. And then they're only gonna be using that credit score when they kind of negotiate terms with you. So that makes things a little challenging to you as a consumer because you have to be asking the right questions. If a lender or someone says, hey, your credit score is a 720, you're gonna wanna ask, hey, is that a tri-merge or a FICO credit score or is that just one of the bureaus? And at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how I actually know an accurate FICO credit score for myself every single day. But okay, now that we know all that information about the differing in scores between bureaus, the differing in scores between lenders potentially, now let's talk about how scores can actually differ when it comes to what you see on your app and versus what a lender actually sees when they pull an actual report. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to check is your app to start and go, okay, is Credit Karma or Credit Journey or whatever you're using, is it actually reporting all three bureaus or is it just showing you one? That's the first and easiest thing to check for. But let's say it is showing all three bureaus, which is actually pretty rare, but let's say it's showing all three bureaus and it's actually your FICO credit score. Well, here's the problem we end up running into. Those apps aren't gonna have the same information that the credit bureaus have, Plus, they're not gonna be synced up time-wise that the credit bureaus are. So for example, some collections and some major delinquencies will not show up on your credit karma or credit journey or whatever you're using. Plus, to even add to that is the fact that personal, old personal information, old addresses, old names of yours, all that kind of personal information that doesn't necessarily rely on trade lines, but it's still on a full credit report, those apps that you have on your phone is not gonna have all that information on there. So if you've had a lot of maiden names or you've had a lot of old addresses or you just have a lot of old information on your report, that could drag your score down a bunch and these apps aren't gonna pick up that information. So that's big problem number one. And the secondary big problem that you're gonna have is gonna be the time sync and how we're always playing this game of cat and mouse. And let me give you a real life example. So let's say you pay down your Chase credit card right now. You just went on your phone, you paid it down, the payment went through and Chase has has a, um, an app called Credit Journey. It's within your app. I actually have a Chase credit card or backed by Chase. So I know that it's Credit Journey in there. Let's say you look at your Credit Journey and let's say Credit Journey was reporting all three bureaus, which it doesn't. But let's say it was reporting all three bureaus. When you make that payment on that credit card, it knows you just made that payment. And so it knows that your credit utilization is far lower, which is gonna shoot your score up immediately. It's gonna literally be like, hey, you just made this payment yesterday. Your score just went up 15 points. However, if I were to check your score that day, I'm not gonna see that updated balance because Chase is only gonna be reporting to the credit bureaus 
once every 30 days. And if they just reported the day before, that means we gotta wait 30 days for me to actually see it on my end. Remember, it's expensive to constantly update and report this information. And it sucks even more because not only does it take Chase a while to update the bureaus, but if anything were to be updated with the bureaus on that day, Chase is gonna take a while to actually get that information as well. So for example, if you got a collection on your report, oh crap, you got a collection that was put on, that collection agency is gonna report it the day it becomes a collection. So they're literally going to be like, hey, Experian, hey, TransUnion, hey, Equifax, there's a collection on Joe Smo's credit report. Put it on their report right now. They're going to put it on your report right then and there, but Chase is only going to be basically pinging the credit bureaus once every 30 days. So I'm going to see on your report immediately that, hey, you have a collection. This is what dropped your score. But the, the apps and, and kind of Chase and Credit Journey and all that stuff, they're not going to get that information for potentially another 30 days. And this can happen whether it's something good or something bad, a new trade line, or maybe you got some new kind of payment history on there. Those apps aren't going to be getting that information until every cycle. I know you're probably sitting there going like, this is the oldest way of doing things and the technology is literally like in the prehistoric age. It's terrible. I know, believe me, I'm right there with you. Hopefully something in the future, maybe like along the lines of the technology with cryptocurrency and blockchain, that we can kind of speed this kind of communication communication up so everyone's on the same page way sooner because right now it takes forever for things to update across all platforms. Now, not all is lost though. Depending on your situation, we can get things updated immediately. So if you did pay down that balance and it's not reflecting on my side just yet, we could get it reflected and updated immediately. It's called a rapid rescore. It does cost money to do. Of course, everything costs money these days, but it doesn't necessarily happen with everything. It's used mainly for just paid down balances. You can use it on other updates to your credit report, but it has to be documented pretty much perfectly and it's a lot more challenging. And again, it is expensive. So it's really only used when you absolutely need to do it and like, you know, are willing to pay the money to do it. Okay. So I think that's pretty much all the information on why your scores can differ between credit bureaus and maybe different services and platforms and lenders and user interfaces and all that jargon. And it's incredibly challenging to know what your exact credit score is at any given time which is why I use something called My Score IQ. It is a platform, I'll leave it linked down below. It's a platform that allows you to see your most accurate and up-to-date credit report that the credit bureaus are seeing and also what lenders are seeing so you know exactly what your score is all the time. And now that you know how all this communication kind of works, a service like this essentially is gonna be pinging the credit bureaus and pinging your specific profile every single day. It's checking for new trade lines, new updated information, collections, literally anything that would show up on your credit report, it is pinging and checking for every single day. And as I mentioned throughout this video, that doesn't come free. So it does cost, it is a monthly cost to do it. I think it's super cheap for what you get out of it. I'm saving so much money in the long run by knowing exactly what my credit score is. Maybe even if I've got any like identity fraud going on, I'm going to know literally instantly. I'm not going to have to wait 30 to 60 to 90 days to see if something reports on my report. Um, maybe I don't know about it. It just absolutely trashed my credit. No, I'm not willing to, to risk that. So um, I think it's super affordable and really cheap to have that information. And I'm going to be saving so much money in the long run. Like I just mentioned, my interest rate on any loan that I'm going to get is going to be the best because I know exactly what my credit score is. But again, there's a link down below. Uh, if you use the link in the description, you actually get a nice little promo discount. So you're welcome. But yeah, that's just kind of my two cents on how your scores can differ and why it's so important to actually know what your scores are. So I've got tons of other really great information on credit on this channel. So I highly recommend you check out the playlist linked down below or just subscribe for more content on this channel. I'm always trying to release some good information to kind of help you out. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I'd really appreciate it. Hit that like button as always, you know, leave me a comment down below and uh, I will see you in the next video.